What is the creepiest thing that has ever happened in your house at night? Whether you were alone or not. I was at my cousin's house in the middle of the country for the weekend with my sister. It was around midnight and we decided to head to bed. My sister roomed with my cousin and I went into the guest bedroom. I was sleeping in the guest bedroom and I woke up to find that someone was in my bed. I was laying on my side and I turned over and I only saw the bottom half of the body because my shoulder blocked the rest and your head can only turn so much naturally. I could feel the legs next to me and I assumed it was my sister because earlier before we arrived at my cousin's house, my sister said she might have trouble sleeping because she slept in really late, so I figured she was getting in bed with me because she was unable to sleep. I was kind of ticked off that I was woken up by her and she was hogging most of the bed. And I even thought as I was going to try to fall back asleep that I don't normally wake up from sleeping, even if there is a disturbance around me. I don't wake up for anyone or anything, it's lights out for me pretty much. So I wake up around 9 am and see that she is not in bed with me. So I go to the kitchen to grab something to eat and get some water. While I'm getting the water, I see that my sister is back in bed with my cousin. Nothing out of the ordinary. When they both wake up, I ask my sister if she came into my room last night, and she questionably said no. I ask my cousin if that was her, and she said no. We proceed to ask my aunt and she said no. Someone was in bed with me, I felt the legs there. I asked if they were playing a joke on me, and they were completely serious. I go back into the bedroom to find that the right side of the bed was completely undisturbed. Needless to say, I freaked the heck out. It was late on a Saturday night and my parents were away for the weekend. I had a friend over and we were watching a movie on the lower floor of my house. I have to point this out, when you're downstairs, you can't hear a thing from upstairs, that's just the way the house is built. Anyways, it was getting pretty late and my friend says he should be heading home. I was quite into the movie and just said, you know the way out. He said goodbye and walked upstairs. About half an hour later, the movie was over, and I turned off all the lights and went to bed, which is downstairs. I was half asleep half awake, you know the feeling, when I heard this crazy laughter upstairs. It was like a mixture of the Joker and Donald the Duck, if that makes any sense. My heart was pounding and I walked slowly upstairs only to find the front door wide open. My friend had forgotten to close it. Terrified, I closed the door and knew that someone, a laughingstock, was inside my house. I didn't know what to do but opted to take a kitchen knife and search the house. I was shaking, but something drove me on. The whole time I was thinking to myself, if I see someone, am I really going to stab him? I didn't know, just had to find out. After searching the house high and low. I literally search every spot inside. I found nothing and went to bed. To this day, I have no idea who was laughing or where it came from. The most creepy part though, is that two years later, my little brother heard the same laughter, alone in the house. I grew up on a 40-acre farm in rural North Florida. When I was around 8 and my brother was 5, during the summer, we could hear faint creepy music. No kidding, it sounded like carnival music or something, coming from far off in towards the woods. The area we were in was all miles and miles of dirt roads with nothing around that should be playing music, especially loud enough for us to hear. The music continued throughout the summer intermittently being heard. We tried to tell our parents and they thought we were making it up until one day, my dad was outside with us and heard it. He loaded us up into the farm truck and we actually went looking for where it was coming from. We would get closer and as soon as we did, it seemed to move. We looked for over an hour and never found the source. Additionally, for the entire summer of 1995, I could hear children playing outside my window at night. My friends stopped coming over, it was seriously creeptastic. My parents said it was the tree scraping outside my window and decided to cut it down so that it wouldn't scare me anymore, but the playing sounds never dissipated. When Hurricane Opal hit, my mom, brother, and I evacuated taking only what we could fit in our backpacks. My dad stayed at the farm to look after the animals. When we got back, my dad was going to take a nap in my room for some reason that I don't remember. I was listening to the radio on the lowest volume and repacking some of the things I had taken with me when my dad tells me to turn down the radio. He thinks he hears something. In broad daylight, my dad heard the sounds of kids playing beneath my window. After he heard them, they stayed around for maybe a week and never returned. When I was about 19, I stayed sometime with my grandparents. It was a big six-bedroom house, and my grandparents had gone away for the weekend. 
I went to sleep late as usual, and at about 2.30 am, I woke up to some noise and heard some loud footsteps followed by someone opening the fridge, pouring something to drink and putting the metal cup in the sink. I immediately stood up, grabbed a baseball bat I had, and went to turn on the light switch which was on the other side of the room, but as soon as I stood up, the light switched on. The light thing kind of scared me a bit, and I stepped back a bit, and the light switched back off. Now I was just confused. I thought I was simply dreaming, but then I heard some more footsteps. I went to take a look and the fridge was open, and there was an empty cup in the sink. So I walked all around the house looking for some sort of intruder to bust his butt and there was absolutely nothing strange. The doors were all well locked and the windows, which had metal bars, were all closed. I turned on the kitchen lights and went to check the cup, but it had no fingerprints on it which was weird. I have no explanation on what happened, but I guess it was the closest thing I've felt to a supernatural experience. My closest guess is, I sleepwalked, and then I half woke to hear everything. I still can't explain the lack of prints on the cup. When I was younger, my room in my parents' house was the basement. Not a bad deal considering that there was a big screen TV, pool table, ping pong table, universal gym and whatnot to keep me and my friends entertained. The problem was, it was still a basement, albeit finished, carpeted, with furniture everywhere. I got used to the basement since it was my room since I was little. There were always weird noises, and the previous couple had left some of the furniture that they didn't need in the house when they sold it. The husband had passed away, not sure if in the house itself, but maybe, and the wife moved to Florida. The standard creaks and settling of the house never bothered me, but some of the random noises did. Occasionally, you would hear pool balls roll, it was one of those tables that had a ball return, but it never really caused any concern. One night, however, I heard a crashing sound, as if something fell in the laundry room. I had just gone to bed with the TV on, watching Conan I think. I get up to see what caused the noise, assuming that something we stored in the room had fallen. The light switch to the laundry room is on the outside of the room, and I flip the switch, open the door and check everything out. All looks in order and upon further inspection, I cannot find anything that caused the sound. I decide it was nothing and proceed to exit the room. Across from the door, against the opposing wall, there was a full-length mirror. As I am exiting the room and reach for the light switch, in the mirror, I see a roll of paper towels roll across the floor. I immediately look back into the room thinking that someone probably grabbed one out of the bag, 16-pack or whatever, and didn't put them back properly, resulting in them falling. I look for the rebel roll but can't find anything anywhere. I knew what I saw and looked in the mirror again, nothing. Rather than continue to seek out the evasive bounty roll, I slowly close the door, turn off the light, and go back to watching Conan, hoping that the humor will help lighten the weirdness. It didn't. Never found that roll. First, some background on me, as to establish some basic human credibility before I recount the events that nearly ruined me. I'm a 20-year-old male college student studying political science at Cal State Long Beach. I'm also a member of a fraternity on campus. I don't do drugs, and during the course of these events, I only used Calaxian once. Mid-January 2011, my best friend Ryan, fraternity pledge brother, and I looked to move out of the fraternity house in hopes of bringing some form of normalcy back to our lives. We found an apartment for rent in our price range, $1,200 for a two-bedroom in downtown Long Beach, so we followed up and made it happen. The day after we moved in, something strange happened. I went to take my second shower since moving in, and five minutes into it, was greeted by my neighbor from downstairs, complaining that massive amounts of water were leaking into her unit from ours. I checked the water heater and found water gushing from an emergency release valve on the top, which is never supposed to be opened. A few weeks later, late February, I come home from my crappy job at the CSULB bookstore to find my roommate locked out on our second-story balcony. He knocks on the glass door and I let him in. I think it's hilarious and ask him how long he was locked out for. Turns out, he was locked out for six hours. Because his right arm was in a splint from shoulder surgery, he wasn't able to climb down. He also didn't have his cell phone. He told me that he swore the door was unlocked when he went out for a cigarette. We agreed it was kind of strange, but laughed about him being stuck out there for six hours. A few days later, Ryan offers me a bowl to celebrate our new lives away from the frat house. I don't often smoke pot, but I decide it would be fun. I go to bed 45 minutes later and out of nowhere, I am the most terrified I have ever been in my life. I felt strange, and it was not from the pot. 
I had the overwhelming feeling that there was some manifestation of negative energy in my room. I was hearing thoughts that were not mine, and they were not pleasant. My closed door was bouncing back and forth, so I closed my windows. It continued. I frantically grabbed my phone from the window seal to text Tryon in the next room. My phone shows one new text, so I click the message box, but there is no new text message. Convenient time for an iPhone glitch, right? Ryan tells that I need to calm down and go to bed. The next morning I wake up and convince myself that it was all the result of some bad weed and go about my day. A few weeks later, I'm at work and get a text from Ryan saying that he's locked out again. So I leave work early to get home and let him in. When I got home and let him in, he was a little freaked out. He told me that this time, he left the door cracked open a few inches and that it slammed shut on its own and latched right after. To latch this heavy glass sliding door, you must push the lock up against gravity. We were both pretty disturbed, but for the next few weeks, we went about our lives. On March 15, 2011, I went home after my classes and discovered Ryan's room completely torn apart. It looked like the place had been ransacked. There were clothes everywhere, items knocked over. His heavy wooden desk had been completely knocked over, and the pencil tray had been pulled all the way out and dumped. It looked like a fleabing tornado came through. I look through the glass door and see Ryan locked out on the balcony, and he starts banging on the glass. Chris, let me in man. Hurry up, let me the flurbo in. I open the door for him, and the first thing he says to me is, bro, all of this stuff happened while I was out there. I fleabing watched as my room was completely torn apart by some invisible force for half an hour. He swears that he went out for a smoke, and that this time, he left the door halfway open. He hears the door begin sliding shut on its own, so he grabs it as quick as he can and catches it before it closes, but the force of the door was too strong and actually pulled him with it. Ryan swears that as he smoked his way through a full pack of cigarettes, he watched as his room was ransacked by some invisible force. I was freaked the flurbo out and wanted nothing more than to GTFO out of there and never go back. I told Ryan that I thought we should both get out of the apartment for a while, but he just wanted to clean his room and ignore it. His tough guy attitude toward the situation was typical. I couch surfed for about a week before regaining the courage to go back and face this thing. The weeks and months that followed were among the worst of my life. Any peace of mind that I had in my own bedroom was lost. When I wanted to fall asleep, strange things would start happening. My closed door would start shaking back and forth, and occasionally, I would hear a violent bang on the door. It got to the point where I would put my shoes up against the door to stop it from banging back and forth. Then one morning, I woke up and found that one of those shoes had been moved to the other side of the room. Ryan would go home to San Diego on the weekends, which meant that I was often there alone. I would often hear footsteps on my carpet next to me as I tried to fall asleep, and I would sense overwhelming negative energy. In short, when it was around our apartment, I could feel it. I would get goosebumps out of nowhere, and I could just sense it. It was a very strange sensation, and I'm afraid I cannot quite effectively describe it to you. My sleeping habits deteriorated, and my grades began to drop like stones. We didn't know how to deal with it, so we started to ignore it, but I can tell you that it was very difficult to ignore. I found that it was nearly impossible for me to fall asleep before 2 a.m., no matter how hard I tried. Something would always keep me up. The growling sound was the worst. It was low-pitched and extremely creepy. For a while, I thought it was an airplane, but after going outside and not being able to hear the sound, I concluded that the source was indeed inside the apartment. I'm having trouble piecing the rest of the events in order, so I will just list some of the creepy things that happened. During the day in mid-April, Ryan's girlfriend, Taylor came over. We were trying to put a movie in the Xbox when the power went out. To our surprise, the power outage was restricted to our two bedrooms and not the rest of the apartment. Strange. We decided to play Uno on the carpet in the main room. While playing, we all three heard the sound of something sliding across our tile countertop in the kitchen. I go to investigate and find that it was their bottle of Andre champagne. A few weeks ago, days before we broke our lease and moved out, I was home alone again and in my room on Reddit. I look across the room at my MacBook charger and notice that it was moving on its own, back and forth, and making strange shapes like it was alive. I left the room and went into the kitchen. I opened the cupboard and discovered that my unopened box of honey bunches of oats had been torn open and the bag had been pulled out at a very strange angle. Decided to leave and spend the night at the fraternity house.